Hello there, and hello to a very late 2020 skincare favourites. I wrote this list at the end of last year, but haven't been able to fit in the video because it's such a big one. So big, in fact, I've had to split it into two parts. The list of products I want to talk about physically doesn't fit in the description box, so I'm going to focus on my skincare routine first, then cover bath and body favourites, lips, hair, hands and nails in another video. The reason the list was so long for 2020 is that skincare, body and bath products and scents became such an important type of self-care for me. I know that's true for many of you too. The usual relaxation or sense of routine we get from our daily skincare rituals became even more significant and honestly helped me get through the year. In any skincare video, I always like to reinforce that I'm not an expert. Everyone's skin and skin type is so different, so I can only share my personal experience with the products I enjoyed using. My skin type is usually normal to dry, but in 2020 it suddenly said, oh, Sorry, hi, I don't think we've met before. I'm dry, so hydration became very important. I also had a few months of the angriest skin of my life. Again, I know that was true for so many people too. So in a skincare routine video last year, I spoke a bit about that and shared some of the spot treatments I used. This might look like a lot, but I don't use everything at the same time. My steps are actually pretty simple and I just swap things in and out depending on how my skin feels. In the morning, I splash my face with cold water or use a gentle cleanser, then mist, moisturizer, SPF. And at night, I use a cleanser, mist, serum, face oil, and moisturizer. A general skincare rule is to apply products from the thinnest to the thickest texture, except in the case of sunscreen in the morning. That should always be your last skincare step before makeup. I started using a heavier evening moisturizer than usual, so unlike my previous routines, my moisturizer moved back and went last after face oil. Then twice a week, I use a chemical exfoliant and twice a week, I use a mask. I'll run through some of the skincare tools I loved too. Let's get into it. Starting with the most important category, sunscreen. There's no point spending a fortune on other products if you're not protecting your skin. It's the most valuable step, not only to prevent signs of aging, dark spots, fine lines, but to save your life. Skin cancer is so serious, so just put it on every day, okay? Find a formula you enjoy. This is the one I enjoy. I'm like a broken record when it comes to Ultraviolet, the best Aussie sunscreen brand from Melbourne, and they recently launched at Space NK in the UK, and they're shipping to Europe too. I love so many of their creations and so does Caroline Hirons now but Supreme Screen with the yellow lid is the hydrating SPF 50 in first place for me. So lightweight and creamy so it preps my skin perfectly for makeup and creates a healthy hydrated glow. Speaking of glow, my favourite body sunscreen, Ultraviolet's Extreme Screen Body and Hand SPF 50 formula has incredibly fine shimmer in it so your limbs are protected and have a great glowy sheen. The texture is even thinner than Supreme Screen so it honestly feels like rubbing in a juicy body moisturiser. And it smells delicious like a coconutty tropical holiday. Here are the evening and morning cleansers that kept my skin in check. No surprises, Aven Clenance is here again. I've loved this for a few years now. It's a thorough foaming gel cleanser from the French pharmacy world. And even though it's aimed at oily or blemish prone skin and I have dry skin, it does a great job keeping hormonal breakouts under control and doesn't give my face that dry or stripped or tight feeling. It's super clean, but comfortable. Another cleanser I can always count on is Go To Properly Clean, one of my favorite Aussie brands and one of my favorite skincare brands full stop. I could happily use their products exclusively. This is a nice gentle formula, so I like swapping to it if my skin is just not happy and it seems to calm things down. When I splash it away, my face feels so fresh and so clean and very soft. I introduced Glow Recipes Blueberry Bounce Gentle Cleanser into my morning routine earlier in the year and really enjoyed it. I used up a couple of travel sizes to test them out, but now I've upgraded to the full size. This foams up really well, feels nice and refreshing and softening. The scent is worth noting though. I like a lot of Glow Recipes fruity skincare scents, but this one is a bit more of an artificial candy blueberry. This last one might be a bit of a surprise. I went into testing some Kylie Skin products last year with an open mind when they launched in Australia at Mecca, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. There are a couple in particular that I think are really good skincare basics. One of them was the Foaming Face Wash, and it's remained a reliable morning cleanser for me. Very foamy, as the name suggests. It's quite a rich foam, really gentle, not drying, so it leaves my skin feeling fresh and soft. Wouldn't be something I'd use to remove makeup, but to wake my face up in the morning, it's great. 
While I was getting reacquainted with my dry slash dehydrated skin, hydrating serums came to the rescue. I loved these three. In fact, I think these were my favourite skincare finds of the whole year. You can see I've nearly finished off Sand and Skies Tasmanian Spring Water Splash Serum. This is an Aussie brand and I enjoy a few of their products, but this shot straight to the top of the list when it launched last August. This has two types of hyaluronic acid and refreshing spring water from Tasmania, one of my favourite places to visit in Australia. It feels water light and thin, not tacky or sticky, sinks in quickly and has a zingy citrusy scent. Another thirst quenching serum I used a lot was Glow Recipes Plum Plump Hyaluronic Serum. I almost can't split those two, they're both fantastic and make my skin feel so bouncy and hydrated. This one has an ever so slightly thicker texture, more like a very thin gel, so it's still super light. The hero ingredients alongside hyaluronic acid are three types of plum to nourish and hydrate. It's described as giving your skin a delicious drink and I couldn't agree more. Such a great refreshing, supple feel, it's not sticky and the scent is probably the most subtle of any Glow Recipe product I've tried. The final serum I fell in love with last year was Dior's Capture Total Super Potent Serum. Definitely in the luxury skincare category here, but it's a little bit harder to put into just one box because it's hydrating, but also smoothing and firming and gives you a glow. I almost can't really pinpoint exactly what it does. I just know my skin looks so even and smooth and healthy and glowy when I use this, so I'm hooked and onto my second bottle. The only downside is the very strong perfume-like floral fragrance, but I'm used to it now, just worth pointing out. In the past few years, face oil has become my favourite skincare category, which is a big call because I enjoy just about every step of my routine. Regular viewers will have seen all three of these before. Vintner's Daughter Active Botanical Serum, which has an oil texture rather than a serum, is probably the most treasured product in my bathroom, but it's also the most expensive. Now I never comment on whether a product is worth it because that's such a personal call, but what I can tell you is that this is my fourth or fifth bottle maybe, and I definitely think it deserves its cult status. My skin just looks its best when I use this, really glowy, and it seems to be the best at calming any breakouts too. I've also been a fan of Le Prunier's Plum Beauty Oil since 2019, but they had a big year in 2020 when Chrissy Teigen sang this product's praises. This is a lovely, light, glowy face oil, and I love the backstory. Three sisters on their family's 100-year-old organic solar-powered farm in Northern California took the plum kernels that used to be a waste product and cold-pressed them into this. My skin is very grateful. The final face oil, Go-To Face Hero, is small but mighty. This is one-sixth and one-half of the price of the other two, so it's a formula I've used for such a long time and will keep repurchasing until the end of time. This still feels like a treat, it has 10 different plant and nut oils, it's probably the lightest texture here, it sinks in so nicely, very proud that the brand is right here on our doorstep in Australia, but GoTo has a US website too. I mixed things up with my moisturizers last year, trying some really simple formulas when my skin was a bit cranky, but a thicker, more nourishing option made the biggest difference in the end. GoTo's very useful face cream has been my go-to winter moisturizer for many years because it's thicker and creamier than the usual gel creams I like. When I realized a lot of my skin freakouts last year related to hydration or lack thereof, I made the switch to using this morning and night and it was a huge help. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin, I massage in a small amount and it almost melts to a really cushiony, comfy finish. Mid skin meltdown mid year before my dehydration realization, I wanted to go back to basics and started using Shani Darden's Weightless Oil Free Moisturizer in the morning. She's a facialist to the stars and one of the most famous estheticians in Los Angeles, and you'll find her own range of products under Sephora's Black Owned Brands list. This is really light, fast absorbing, doesn't clog pores, so it was a great option for weightless hydration. My final morning moisturizer favorite was the Kylie Skin Face Moisturizer. I know, again, I was surprised how much I enjoyed this as a simple moisturizer. You can see it has a creamy texture, but it ends up feeling more like a medium weight gel cream when you massage it in. It's not heavy or greasy. It's fragrance free, creates a smooth base for makeup and your skin feels really soft to the touch. Certainly aware of various pros and cons with this brand. I think Caroline Hirons pointed them out well in her review, but I agree with her on the cleanser and moisturizer. Very pleasant surprise. On to exfoliation. Big fan of chemical exfoliants. I usually use them twice a week, but I don't mix and match these. I tend to stick to one formula for quite a while, then swap over. 
The Ren Ready Steady Glow Daily AHA Tonic is a formula I've enjoyed for quite a few years and rediscovered in 2020. It's actually the exception to my twice weekly rule because it is gentle enough to use every day, but every second day works quite well for me too. I notice an obvious glow using this and it was great to see them swap to a 100% recycled, reclaimed ocean plastic bottle last year. Bamboo Face is the Australian brand that makes the reusable cotton rounds I enjoy and they launched their first skincare product in 2020. I was lucky enough to test the exfoliating tonic for a while before it launched. You can see I used that sample right up and it now comes in a glass bottle. This was something I used two to three times a week and my face looked bright, my skin tone seemed more even and my skin felt soft and supple. The chemical exfoliant I always come back to though is Go To Exfoliating Swipies. This is my all time favorite. No matter how soft and glowy my skin looks using other formulas, this just takes it to another level. Nothing makes my face feel as instantly soft as this. It's so satisfying when you wash it off and it keeps my skin looking bright and clear. I swipe the little pad all over my face using one side, then the other, leave it for a minute and rinse it off following the brand's instructions. Always a treat to use. Face mists are a key part of my routine after cleansing to help my serum and moisturizer sink into the skin. A sweet new addition was Glow Recipes Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. This smells so fresh and fruity, like real slices of watermelon, and it has one of the best spray mechanisms I've come across. It keeps it really light, but you can hold it down for a nice continuous spray too. Heritage Store Rose Water is a more affordable favorite. I bring this stuff back in bulk from the US where it's easier to find. This is a really straightforward, refreshing rose water spray and it smells sweet like rose water essence. Last but not least, my forever favorite, Jolique Rose Water Balancing Mist. I always have one of these on the go in my bathroom. It's made in South Australia with real rose petals and it has a soft, subtle rose scent. Two favorite masks to treat my skin twice a week. I alternate between the two, a clean out with a gentle clay formula, then a big boost of hydration. I needed a far more creamy, rich experience in the hydrating mask department last year, and Jolique's Rose Moisturizing Cream Mask was a dream. British facialist Nicola Joss uses this on her celebrity clients, and it's so nice for a pamper session at home. Really hydrating without feeling heavy. I only apply quite a thin layer, leave it to sink in for quite a while, then massage and splash it off for soft, plump skin. Charlotte Tilbury's Goddess Skin Clay Mask is my favorite of her skincare creations and my most used clarifying mask last year. The combination of Spanish clay, sweet almond oil, and frangipani extract, which gives it a lovely relaxing scent, also means it's not drying or stripping at all. My skin looks noticeably brighter and smoother, like a filter or a fancy facial, but it's just me in my pajamas in front of Real Housewives with this on for 10 minutes. Finishing with a couple of relaxing tools I enjoyed. I'd been fascinated by Sarah Chapman's facial lift device for a long time. She's a famous London facialist, and this strange looking wishbone stethoscope was one of my best purchases in 2020. This gives you such a firm facial massage as 48 nodules tackle tightness in your jaw, but I'd recommend following her tutorial to use it at the right angle. Then the Zove Beauty Rose Quartz Gua Sha from Melbourne was perfect for a moment of peace. The stone feels so cool on the skin, so it's instantly calming and softly sculpting your cheekbones or brow bone or following a lymphatic drainage tutorial feels like a nice way to wind down. There you have it, a very belated look at a big skincare pile that kept me going last year. I'd love to hear about your 2020 skincare favorites. I know it's a little while ago now, but please let me know if skincare played an important self-care role for you too, and have a think back over some of the products you enjoyed. Don't worry, my 2021 skincare favorites video is already on my calendar, it won't be this late, and I'll see you for part two with bath and body favorites, lips, hair, hands, and nails soon. Thanks for watching, see you next time.